Hi, it's Stephen here for Bland Designs, and this is CRAP video number 17. And CRAP stands for Creative, Re Creative Relaxation and Play. And it's where I try out a product in either it's a new product or a new technique and see what happens. I will either get something awesome or I'll get something that is crap. So today, what I'm going to give a try with is I've pulled out my jelly plates, and this is a 5x7. And I've got my oxide inks off camera here, and I'm going to try to print with oxide inks. Now, I cheated a little bit. I saw this idea somewhere on YouTube, and so I'm going to try to recreate what I saw there and maybe do a couple of things of my own to see just how effective oxide inks might be on a jelly plate. So, first of all, I need to pick out some colors, and I think I'm going to pick out three colors. And I think I'm going to do these, the first three, in maybe blues. So I've got faded jeans. And let's see. Let's take out broken china and peacock feathers. So I'm just going to do this in shades of blues. Um, now, usually when you put, uh, when you use acrylic paint on your jelly plate, you put it on and spray it around. And so I'm going to do a similar thing with this, but I'm just going to take the oxide inks and I'm just going to smush them. That is a technical term. You've heard me use it before, smush. So I just put my three colors, one right after the other. Move these out of my way for a moment. Take out my brayer and... Hmm. I don't know if that's the way to go. Okay, let's take a piece of paper, put it on, and uh, I like to use a clean brayer. You can use your hands, but I usually use a brayer for this. And let's see what we get. Not bad. Okay, so can I get a ghost print? Let's give that a try. Oops, used the wrong brayer. Well, it's okay. And there's a ghost print. So let's try one more. Let's see if we can get three out of this. I don't think we'll get much on the third one. No, not really. Okay, so let's apply our colors again, just the same as we did last time. And actually, I'm, I'm pushing down a little hit harder this time with the pad. See what happens. And I'm going to lightly spritz them with some water. Oops, get my... That's all I'm going to do. And now I'm going to take the brayer. Ooh, that makes it really quite soupy and runny. And you can see, actually, that's kind of neat. It came off out the brayer, though. And let's take the first one that we did. Let's see what kind of effect we get out of this. Well, that's kind of cool. And let's do the ghost. Now I think if you leave it on here for just a little longer than you would if you were doing acrylic paint so that the wet oxide inks can absorb into your paper. And we got a little down there. So that's kind of interesting. Are they dry? Yeah, they're dry. They don't dry quite as quick though as acrylic paints. Okay, so I think for now though what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave this as it is. I'm going to pick out some more colors. Let's uh, let's get out the fossilized amber, and this time let's just use one color, put it all over the jelly plate, just like that. And I have these texture plates that I purchased some time ago. 
and I haven't really used them much, but you can see they've got, this one has lines on it, and I'm just going to push it into the oxide inks here, lift it up, and do the same thing down here, just so I cover the whole jelly plate. Got a little off of this, like a rubber stamp. And let's take our first print. And I picked up some of the yellow, but I didn't really pick up much of the texture from that plate. Let's just use the ghost to clean it off. Okay, so here's what I've got, but I really didn't get the lines. Now let's let's try a different texture paste. Let's try uh, a darker color. Let's go with something like. Um, Let's see. Let's use fired brick. Now I'm wondering, okay, this time I'm going to go all across the jelly plate just like this, and I'm not actually going to use my brayer on this. I'm just gonna I just put it all over as you saw, and that's all I'm gonna do. And I'm going to take another one of these texture plates. This one has butterflies on it. I'm just going to put it right here in the middle. I'm going to press it into the jelly plate. And I'm getting over here on my scratch piece of paper, which I will not throw out, by the way. I will use this for something else. Actually, there's quite a bit of ink stayed on that texture plate. Okay, let's take our first one again, lay it down, now remember I didn't brayer the color over this jelly plate, I just put it over all over the area with my ink direct from the ink pad. Hmm. Well, again, I got some texture, but I do not really see the butterflies in this, although that's interesting. So those probably work better, choose the ghost, with your acrylic paints as opposed to using oxide inks. Now, of course, what you could do, see a little bit more here, it's a ghosting, what you could do is take, I'm out of the shot here, I see that. Um, let's just use the fire brick again, but let's go directly onto this texture plate, just like it was a rubber stamp. Ink it up. Let's just move this over to the side, and let's just use it like that as a rubber stamp. Might work better if I had a stamp pad underneath here, you know, a foam pad. Pressing it down well, though. Yeah. Now that's kind of interesting. And I probably have some ink left on this, so I'll put that over to the side. And just to clean this off, We'll just press it, press it over our scratch paper. Okay. Alrighty then. So that was the first one. We have multiple colors on that. And then we have this one that was sort of a ghost. So I think I'm going to set those both aside. I will use those for something. And... Um, I had another one of these with uh, letters and numbers and things in it, but we already know how they work 
with the oxide inks. I also have a couple of these. Now these are actual rubber stamps and I want to try them uh, in this. These are a little thinner. These are thicker. So let's... All right. Let's change our color scheme a little bit. Let's do fossilized and let's do a little bit of the red and let's do some twisted citron. I'm not going to brayer it because I don't want to mix the colors. So first of all, I'm just going to put a blank sheet down. I'm not going to do anything more to this except just lift some color just to see how that looks. And that's pretty much what I figured. You're, it's almost like you used it directly from the pad. Um, now I'm going to spritz it a little bit. And I'm going to take a new sheet. And so there, I got sort of a more of a water runny color. And of course, the oxides do react to water. Now, that's an interesting thing. The oxides react to water. So let's just clean this off a little bit more in case there's more on here. You know, there wasn't much. But let's just take this one that had the more solid color on it and let's just spritz it. And yes, it does keep its reactive qualities. Let's grab a paper towel. And just dab some of this up. So because oxide inks react to water and they give you this water like or watermark like texture. Now, I didn't get as much of that as I would get if I had just put the um, ink right on to the paper itself without going through the jelly plate, but I do get some texture with this. This is kind of neat. Um, so you can see the two. So definitely potential here. So we'll work with those. And I think, first of all, I should blast them with the heat gun. Because unlike acrylic paint, this, these don't dry quite as fast. So in a sense, you have more open time with these than you do with acrylic paints. Okay, that's good. All right, so let's take some of our blue again. And I'm just going to use faded jeans, and I'm putting the faded jeans on covering the entire jelly plate with faded jeans. And I'm being pretty generous with it. Now it does beat up a little bit on the jelly plate, but that's fine. I'm going to grab one of these new stamps. I've never used these before. They come on their own little plastic sheet. That's, that's convenient. Okay. Now these are thicker than those texture plates because these aren't really meant for jelly plates, they're meant for regular stamping. So let's see what happens. Let's move these out of the way. And I'm just going to stamp off on my scrap piece. Scrap piece is becoming very, very interesting. And I dropped my brayer. Sorry about the noise. Okay, pick that up, and let's take this this one, lay it down. So 
sort of can see it. It's it's not uh, terribly dark, but it adds some texture to it as well. So really, again, using a texture plate in uh, with the jelly plates um, probably work better with acrylic paints than they do with oxide inks. And we got a little bit more texture on that one. But they did add texture. Okay, put those aside. And let's uh, take our stamp, put it to the side. And let's have a little bit of coffee. So, I have used Distress Inks with a jelly plate before. And they will work too. And they work very similar to this. Although I have found using uh, Distress Inks, um, the color isn't quite as vivid as it is with the oxides. All right, what do we want to try next? Well, let's give this one more little clean off here just to get a fresh start. Not that you have to. It doesn't matter if the colors mix. Okay, so that's a cast off sheet. So what do we want to try next? Well, I have got a whole pile of these mini jelly plates. And I'm thinking, why not use them to stamp with? So I'm just going to take the big one, put it to the side, take out a piece of paper, and I'll just grab the rectangle one to start with. Now I'm wondering if I should just, just for the sake of stability. I don't think you have to necessarily do this, but I'm just going to put it onto an acrylic block because I'm basically going to use it like a rubber stamp. So I'm going to take some oxide ink. I'm going to use the Twisted Citron. And I'm just going to block stamp. Okay, I'm going to get to uh, use a piece of my scrap paper here just to clean off. And now let's grab a circle. And let's try the red fired brick. do some overlapping clean it off and then we've got the hexagon so all I'm doing is I'm building up my background using different oxide ink but I'm using the mini jelly plates as like a rubber stamp but because the oxides tend to be uh, you can layer them and they don't change the color you can see the other layers underneath you see these two you can see right through them so you know exactly where you want to lay down your jelly plate. And we've got a big square. I'm just using all of my minis. I'm just playing. And let's use maybe faded jeans, a little darker blue. Okay, so you can see that this is making kind of a neat background, which you could use on a scrapbook page. You could use it as a card background. You could use it in an art journal. Got one shape left. Triangle. 
And let's use broken china. Okay. So we'll just move these out of our way. So there, that's kind of a neat background right there. Now, if we splatter just a little water onto it, Now, one thing, my hand had ink on it, so the ink reacted on my hand a little bit. But we'll see what happens here. Just clean up a little bit. And let's just dab. So we get the watermark effect on this as well. So let's just put this to the side. Let's carry on with our experiment here. So let's do something. The oxide ink in conjunction with the smaller jelly plates. So let me grab the hexagon. And let's mix up the colors here. I'm getting tired of using the same colors. Let's go with Abandoned Coral, Candy Apple Red, Abandoned Coral, coral Abandoned Coral, and Fossilized, let's see, how about um, Spiced Marmalade. So I'm putting down the Candied Apple, and I think I do the, I'll do the Candy Apple as a solid surface to start with. And then let's take the spiced marmalade and put it on the hexagon. And let's see what happens when we press this into this. Now, I wasn't being very precise about the shapes. I'm just seeing, and it was slippery too when I did that. Well, I got some texture. Wasn't really what I was looking for, but hey, we can work with that. Let's um, clean off that one. Let's clean this off completely. Ooh, that's kind of pretty. Set that aside. We may use that for more. I wonder if I can get any more off that. Yes, I can. There's still quite a bit of ink on these. Like I said, they have a very long open time. Okay. What do I want to try next? I want to work with this, this one. So, I'm wondering, how does it work through a stencil? Let me grab a stencil. And I'm just picking the first one that's on the top, which happens to be this one with the little circles in it. And um, let's use some Twisted Citron. Let's lay down our stencil. And let's take a piece of scratch paper. Actually, I'm going to take this one. 
instead of using a piece of copy paper, I'll just take this and I just want to clean out the open spots a little bit. Oh, got some texture on there. Pick this up. Let's take this one. Again, might be the color combination. Doesn't really show up that well. Showed up better on this one. But the negative part didn't really show up. It did add some texture, but it's not that great. I'm just going to take this one again. And just to clean off the jelly plate. I mean, you have to play with that a little bit more. Okay. So, what's that mean? What should we try next? Well, first of all, let's give this a spurt of water. I've, I've taken two poles off of this. And I'm just going to get it wet again. I'm going to take a brand new sheet and just see what happens. Getting a little bit of the reaction free because of the water, of course. But usable as the first as a first layer. Okay, I'm gonna set that here to dry a bit. Okay, what to try next? Well, what about making marks with uh, tools like putting some lines in with a catalyst tool um let's see maybe a small cup let me grab some mark making tools so i have a little collection of household items for mark making i've got paper towel roll cork little cup and I've got this tool. I've also got my catalyst tools which are these kind of things with teeth in it so I'll grab that one. All right let's put down a new layer of color. Do we want to change colors? Do you want to try something different? Let's do some cracked pistachio. Now here, let's try something, first of all. I put this on directly on here. So let's just pull a print before we get into the, the tools. I'm just going to use this one. This piece of paper is still a little damp from the last time. So just pulling off color. Okay, and let's do a ghost. So this was just direct from pad to the jelly plate. I did not brayer over it. Okay. So this time, let's add the cracked pistachio again. But this time, let's just spread it out with the brayer. I've got quite a mess going on over here. Just going to clean up a little bit. Okay, here's my brayer. Okay, and let's take a new one and, and compare. See what the difference is, if there is any difference. Okay, that's with the brayer spread out. This was just putting it with direct 
with the pad. Okay, I get more intense color direct from pad, uh, but it's more blotchy. This is a little lighter, but less blotchy. So really, it depends on what, what you like, what you're trying to get. Let's just clean this off again. So I cleaned it off. There's some orange left over from something. I don't know what that was. All right. So keeping with the pistachio, I'm just going to actually no. This time I am going to smooth that out with the brayer. And I'm only going to go one way this time. I'm going to take a new sheet. No. Okay, I've got that spread out. What I'm going to do is use some of these items. So let's try the paper towel. Or this is actually toilet paper. I'm just sticking it in. And then I'm going to try the little cup. I'll use the bottom. Oops, just cracked my little cup. And I use the cork. Okay. New sheet. Well, that's pretty. It's more subtle than it would be in acrylic paint, but I kind of like that. Uh, let's just take one of these sheets that we were using for ghosts to clean this off. Okay. So let's try though where did i put it buried it let's try our catalyst tool the little teeth so um for sake of contrast let's try fire brick red i am going to spray it and just take this and go new sheet that's kind of cool again you can see it's a different type of texture altogether than you would get from um, using acrylic paints Okay, let's see what I can pick up on this one from the leftovers here. Kind of cool. Anything left on this? Let's give it a clean off here. A little bit, but not much. Okay. So now I have a whole pile of these that I've tried different things with. So I want to make these more interesting by adding some more layers. But I think I need to add something that's a little darker in color. So where is my purple? Here we go. Wilted Violet. Now, when I do this with the brayer, it also takes a little bit of the oxide ink off. And I did that on purpose this time because I want this to be a little lighter. I don't want it to overtake what I've already got on the backgrounds. So let's take that catalyst tool again and go like this. I'm going to take this one.
darkened it, but you can't really see the lines in it. Okay. Let's see if there's anything to pick up here. A little bit, but not much. All right. So let's try. Let's get out that stencil again. And okay, here's a wild experiment. Let's lay the stencil on without any color on the jelly plate. And let's take this. I have no idea what's going to happen with this. I've got it all over my stencil. Now, the first thing is, I can just leave that. Now, the stencil is going to act like a stamp, basically, because it's the stencil that has the ink on it at the moment. And I got some texture out of that. That's kind of cool. But then let's take the stencil off. We've got stuff underneath. It's funny, the stuff underneath looks yellow. Maybe that's because I don't know why. But I'm not going to worry about it. Oh, that's kind of neat. Okay, let's take a see if there's anything left on here. You see, I'm just going through my pile of what I've already done. And I really don't have any idea how these are going to turn out. But they're going to make great backgrounds. Okay. So let's take that stencil again. And let's change out to something a little lighter in color. Um, how about the antique linen? Okay, but first of all, I'm not putting it down here. Uh, I think I want to clean that off a little bit more. So I'm just going to grab another one of these. Now, if you want to be a purist, you could use your baby wipe on it, but I'm not going to be a purist. And I don't think I'll brayer it this time. I'm just going to lay my stencil down. Um, let's take this one. Got a little texture. Let's pull that off. And let's take this little darker one. Again, oops, there goes my rare. I got a little bit of texture. Um, let's clean this off. there okay so using our household items here marking tools let's try something okay let's get radical let's try black soot uh, I'm not gonna put it down too heavy I will use the brayer Okay, let's use the toilet paper tube. One advantage of the black is I can actually see the rings I'm making. I couldn't see them in the other one. And let's use the cup. I 
and let's use our cork. Okay, let's take one of the lighter ones. Let's see what we get. Well, the black kind of overdid the other colors that were there, but we do have the rings. Let's do a bit of a shadow on this one, or a ghost pole. So we got a little less of that, of the, the black, than we got on this one. Okay. What else can we try? Oh, we haven't tried this little tool. All right. Let's uh, do a clean up here, just quickie, just to make sure we get most of the black off. Yep. And let's take, should we try another color? What about picked raspberry? Actually, let's do multiples here. Picked raspberry with a little abandoned coral. And a little fired brick. And I'm going to take the brayer to it. And let's use our little tool here and let's do some squigglies. And we'll use this one. This color combination could be god awful. Interesting. Let's, uh, let's take this one and clean this one up. Hmm. Okay. So I've still got a couple of these here. I think we just leave that one as is, but this one's kind of plain. This one, I think there's enough on it. It's pretty dark. So we got these two. All right, what do we want to try here? Well, why don't we do this? Why don't we take our little one and use it as a stamp? Uh, let's try crack pistachio. But this time, Let's get that fairly juicy, and then let's take, no, let's take uh, the cork. Press that in, and then use it like a rubber stamp. Oh, that's kind of interesting. Okay, so let's add some more of that uh, cracked pistachio. Let's do it again. Okay, well that's kind of interesting. All right, clean that off. 
So what else can we try on this one? Let's get our big plate back out. And um, this dark one. Let's try, uh, try a little bit of the fossilized amber. But this time, put it on good there. Let's use one of our minis. Oops. We'll use the um, triangle. And let's just use this as is and stamp into what we have here. Again, we don't have a lot. It doesn't show up. If this had been acrylic paints, that would have shown up a, a lot better. Let's just take this one and use it to clean it off. And we still have a little bit of color on this one, but let's just go to our scratch piece. It's getting my desk is getting messy here. Okay. I think that is enough. So let's just take a look at what we've created and make some room. All right, so there's our scratch piece of paper right there. You know, that in itself, if I take a script stamp or something and stamp over it in something like Stazon or Memento, that would look really great as a background. And that was just the piece I was using to clean off the um, brayers with. So here are our other pieces. There's a lot of texture in these. Um, colors are a little bit more subdued than acrylic paints, but again that depends on what you pick for your colors. But here you go. Not bad. I could do a lot with these. Cut them down, use them as backgrounds. In fact, that's what I think I'm going to do. I'm going to cut them down to card panel size. And some of them I'll use maybe as cards. Some of them I may use as uh, backgrounds on art journal pages and you could use them for frames or whatever or, or backing for pictures or things you might use in a scrapbook so little experiment using oxide inks as opposed to acrylic paint yes oxide inks will work on a jelly plate um, but they do give a different result than acrylic paints as you have seen so is this crap or is this awesome I don't sure if it's that awesome but it's not crap. It's just another medium that you can use with your jelly plates. So I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you for our next one. So here's what, what I did with some of those backgrounds I made with the oxide inks and the jelly plates. I made them into cards. I just took four of them, cut them down and mounted them. So you can see when you see them this way, when they're cut down, they do make really nice cards. And these aren't necessarily finished. You could leave them like this, or you could stamp an image on top of them, put in a, set, a sentiment, add other things to them, whatever you desire. But you see, they really do create unique backgrounds. So that's jelly plates with um, oxide inks. And now I will really say goodbye for now. Bye-bye.